It's been 25 years since we last had an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Lennox Lewis went to America in 1999 and bought the belts back for Britain. So much has changed since then. I had a haircut that was both long and spiky. Manchester United would win the treble instead of the odd tackle. And you could walk into a busy London pub on a Friday night and buy two non-alcoholic pints and a tap water for just the cost of your dignity. But it's come around and it's here and Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk won a giant switch hitting Brit who talks a lot and the other, a smaller former cruiserweight world champion who is quiet and dignified and doesn't get caught up in the hullabaloo that surrounds such an iconic match. Hullabaloo like we saw at the start of fight week when John Fury decided to throw an unprovoked headbutt in the face of one of Alexander Usyk's much younger and smaller teammates. Hullabaloo like the buzz of everyone coming to Riyadh, hullabaloo like the, the PR events that are being drummed up and the, the promos that are being created. Because what will actually happen when these two men get into this ring in a bout that's built as the ring of fire and we have been promised pyrotechnics, that will all disappear into the ether. An Olympian, an Olympic gold winner from 2012 at London with over 300 amateur bouts, who's visited the front line since Ukraine was invaded by Russia against a man, a showman, a, a, a man who has sold books, sold his, his family life to Netflix. Uh, two completely contrasting characters, but two of the finest boxers of this era since Lennox Lewis. And when they get in the ring, what they've said, what they've threatened, what their teams have done will all disappear. And these two fellas will throw it down probably for the full 36 minutes. And finally, at the end of all that, unless we get a draw, which we all thought would be impossible when Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder first met, one of those fellas will walk away unquestionably the finest heavyweight that walks the earth. And in all the 25 years before, when we had dominant men like Vitaly Klitschko, like Vladimir Klitschko, like Deontay Wilder, like Anthony Joshua, this never happened. They couldn't get it done. But it's here and it's happening and we can't wait. Don't be depressed at the idea that you might have to wait another 25 years for something like this to come around. The rematch is signed and sealed, and it's most likely to happen in October or November, unless one of these guys walks out into the middle of the ring and savages the other inside two, three rounds, and the, the interest and the damage inflicted changes all the landscape. On June 1, Daniel Dubois and Philip Hergovic will meet out here again. That might be for the IBF full heavyweight world title. It might be for an interim. It might be for none if Fury and Usyk is so close and the sanctioning bodies want to keep them together. But what we do believe is that in September at Wembley Stadium in front of 90 plus thousand, probably mostly English fans, Anthony Joshua will get back in the ring for us. And it will be against either Hergovic or Dubois. What it looks like happens next is that Tyson Fury will have settled the Alexander Usyk undisputed discussion and he will be a free agent to finally come face to face with Anthony Joshua. In Morecambe recently, Tyson Fury said he'd do AJ twice. So British fans have still got that to look forward to. But we know that Turkey El Al Sheikh, who's doing all these deals and making all these fights, it's the fight that he wants. Tyson's the guy he brought over there. Tyson's the man that unlocked all these doors to boxing for him. But Anthony Joshua is the man obliterated Otto Wallin and did what Fury definitely couldn't do against Francis Ngannou. They're his two guys and he wants to see them fight. And we think it will very, very much happen in 2025.